A personal budget is an itemized list of expected income and expenses that helps you to plan for how your money will be spent or saved, as well as track your actual spending habits over 12 months. I'm Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you amazing tricks and shortcuts on how to quickly create a customized budget for each month. So let's dive in. Here is my exercise file. I just added some labels. I have the income label in cell B2, and then I have two sources of income, employment and interest, and then below it I have the monthly expenses, and I have different categories of expenses, and then I have two columns, the planned expenses and the actual expenses. In this project, I would like to create a model for one single month for my personal budget, because what changes from one month to the other is not the income, not the planned, but what changes are the actual expenses, and these should be entered for each month. Other than that, all my calculations will be exactly the same. And at the same time, my project should include 12 sheets here below, one sheet for each month, and I have to name them according to each month, January, February, and so on. I also want to extract the name of the month here at the top by using a special formula. So let's start by creating the 12 sheets, and I'll be using a pivot table to do this. First of all, I have number 1 and I have January, so I select these two values, hover over the lower right corner of my selection, the autofill handle, and drag it down up to December. When I release, I would have created an incremental list of months. Later on, I'll need this list in order to extract the month name, so I want to name this list right now, so I click in the name box and I type, let's say, my list and then I hit enter. Now this range is named my list. I'm going to select a single cell and I want to create a pivot table. What's the reason for which I'm creating a pivot table? Because I don't want to insert the sheets one by one and double click and name each sheet. I'm going to do all that in one single step by going to the insert tab of the ribbon I click to the left side of the insert tab on pivot table. Alternatively I can use the shortcut Alt and V and then the Create Pivot Table dialog box opens. I want to create my pivot table in the existing worksheet. I select the destination and then hit OK. When I do that, the Pivot Table placeholder appears, the Pivot Table field list appears on the right side, and two contextual tabs are added to the ribbon, the Analyze and the Design tab. I want to start building my pivot table by dragging the month to the filter, and this is all what I need to do. To the left side of the Analyze tab, I click on the down arrow for options, and from here I'll be selecting Show Report Filter Pages. When I hit OK in this dialog box, keep an eye here on the sheet tabs, all the magic will happen. So let's hit OK, and 12 sheets have been created and named one for each month. I don't need the pivot table field list anymore. And I don't need this filter that was added to each one of the new sheets. So I want to get rid of all the 12 filters. So I click on January and then press the Shift key and click on the rightmost, which is December. All the sheets are now selected altogether. And then I select these two cells. And to get rid of the filter, on the right side of the Home tab, I click on the down arrow of the Clear command and select Clear All. Alternatively, I can use the shortcut Alt-E-A-A. Then I deselect and then ungroup the sheets by clicking on my original sheet, sheet 1, and I finish creating the 12 sheets. Now let's move to the second part of this project, creating a model for my personal budget. I would like to insert some figures for my income, so let's say for the employment income, I type this number, and for the interest, I'm getting that much interest. And then here, in cell B5, I would like to create a total income. I could use the auto sum command. I could use any one of the techniques for summing. I'm going to use the shortcut Alt equal equal. My next step will be adding some values for the planned expenses. And I can do that by typing for the mortgage, insurance, utilities, gas, food, car expenses, entertainment. I would like to add some values in this column. So I start by adding for the mortgage. The planned expenses are exactly the same for each month, but the actual expenses will be different. 
for the mortgage and the insurance, these two numbers do not change. I want to copy them to the right. Right starts with letter R, so I hit Control R to copy to the right. And then I would like to calculate a subtotal for my expenses, so I select these two cells and click on the Auto Sum on the Home tab or on the Formulas tab. My final step is to calculate my savings. My savings are simply the difference between the total income and the subtotal for the expenses. So let me create in cell B17, I type an equal sign and I select the income. And because I'm copying to the right, so I need to lock this cell, type a minus sign and click on the cell above. I'm subtracting B16 from B5 and then I populate my function by hitting Control Enter. The next thing I would like to do is to create a dynamic label. Everything I'm doing right now will save me a lot of effort because I'm creating it in the model sheet and then I'll be copying and pasting all that in each one of the individual sheets and just customize the actual expenses. In cell A1, I would like to create a sample name for the month, so I'll be typing, let's say, January. And then I hit Enter. The next thing I would like to do is to create a dynamic label for the expenses instead of monthly expenses. I wanted to look at cell A1 and create a dynamic label. So I select cell B7, I type an equal sign, click on cell A1, and then type Shift 7, the end symbol on my keyboard, and then in double quotation, I'll be typing a space, and then I type expenses. When I hit Enter, I would have created a dynamic label. One final thing I would like to do is to create a conditional formatting rule for the actual expenses. So whenever my expenses go above the planned expenses, I want the cell to be highlighted. So I select the entire range, although I didn't enter any value yet, but that's not a problem at all. And then I go up at the top in the Styles group on the Home tab, click on the down arrow for conditional formatting, highlight cell rule, and select Greater Than. And because the first cell is the active cell, then I'm creating my conditional formatting rule from the perspective of the active cell, and this conditional formatting rule will travel and will be saved in memory for the entire range. So I'm going to click on the planned expenses in column B, and then I want to unlock this cell, so I hit the F4 key three times, now it becomes a relative cell reference. How would you like to format it? I'll keep the default, and then when I hit OK, I would have created my conditional formatting rule. Although we don't see it, but it lives here. When we enter some values, it will be populated automatically. Then I select this cell, and I'm ready to copy. Where do you want to copy? I want to copy to the 12 worksheets. I start by selecting A1. Remember, all this is sample data. It will be replaced by real values for each month. I'm selecting this entire range, and I hit Control c to copy. And then I want to paste to the 12 sheets. So I click on January. Press the Shift key and click on December, and now I can paste in cell A1 by hitting Control V. I want to adjust the column width, so I select the three columns A, B, C, and then I drag to the right a little bit, and I would have created the same exact setup in each one of the 12 months. Let's check. So if I ungroup the sheets by clicking on Sheet 1, now if I click on January, if I click on February, if I click on March, I have the same exact setup in each one of the 12 months. But look at this. All of them are January because this was in the sample data that I copied. I want for each month to extract the sheet name in cell A1. How can I do that? I'll be using a special function. Let's group the sheets one more time. So I click on January, press Shift, and click on December. So I'm grouping all the sheets all together, and I click on cell A1. And let's extract, first of all, I'll be extracting the sheet number. So January will be number one. February would be number two, and so on. How to extract the sheet number? By typing a sheet function, equal sheet, and then I hit the tab key. Sheet, you can refer to any cell, so I'll be typing A1, and then when I close the bracket and hit enter, look at that, it's extracting the sheet number. Because I'm January right now, I see one, but in each one of these months, I see the corresponding number. Actually, I don't want in cell A1 a number. I need the name of the month, and that's why I created a named range at the beginning of this exercise, my list. Let's use a VLOOKUP function to extract the name of the range. Remember, all my sheets are still grouped, so I hit the F2 key to put my function in the edit mode, click to the left side of sheet and type VLOOKUP, and then what's your lookup value? The number returned by the sheet function. 
and then I hit comma. Where do you look for it? Where is your table array? So I type the name range, my list, and then I hit tab, and then I hit comma. From which column you would like to extract a return value? What's your column index number? It's always the second column, and then I hit comma. Are you looking at an exact match or an approximate match? Well, I'm looking at an exact match, which means false, which means zero. I type zero, close the bracket, and then hit enter. Look at that. I was able to extract the month. Before ungrouping all the sheets, I don't want to keep the function. I need the result of this function. So what do I do then? I'm going to copy Control C, and then I want to paste, but I'll be pasting values. I'll be pasting special. So I use the shortcut Control Alt V, and then I hit V one more time to select values, and then I hit Enter. Now I would have replaced the function. As you can see, no more function here, and I can stop the dancing ends by hitting the Escape key. Now it's the moment of truth. I'm going to ungroup all the sheets. So when I right click on the sheet tab and say ungroup, now if I go to February, I have the month of February, March, I have the month of March, and so on and so on. Let's continue building our budget by entering the actual value and I'm starting with January. Well, in the month of January, for the utilities, I paid a little bit above the plant, so I type 320. Look at that, the conditional formatting pops up automatically. For the gas, I paid a little bit below. And then for the food, we didn't eat much in that month, so I typed 650. For the car expenses, I had to change the brake pads for my car, so I paid a little bit more, so I typed 430, and look at that, the conditional formatting is stored in memory. For the entertainment, there is no much entertainment in winter, so I typed 200, and that's it, and I was able to create the actual expenses, and now I can automatically see that my savings are pretty close to the plan, but it will be a lot better if I could represent these values graphically by creating a chart. So I select all the numbers for the plan, then actual, I'm not selecting the totals, and I would like to create a default chart, which is a column chart, and I can do that simply by hitting the shortcut Alt F1. I don't want these horizontal lines, these grid lines, so I click on them, and I hit the delete key to get rid of them. Also, I would like to apply some formatting for the value axis for these numbers, so I select them, and I want to open the format pane on the right side, so I'll be using the shortcut Control 1. And the format axis pane, well, I want to use the general formatting. I don't need this dollar sign. So I scroll down. When I see numbers, I can click to expand. And here I'll be selecting the general. That makes my chart a little bigger. And the final thing I want to do is to bold these numbers. So I'll be using the shortcut Control b to bold. And I'm almost done with my chart. I just want to close the format axis, and I'll go to the Format tab on the ribbon. Let's add a little outline to our chart. So I click on the Shape Outline, and I would like to add, let's say, this blue outline. One final thing, this title is not dynamic. So I select the chart title, hit the F2 key on my keyboard, type an equal sign, keep an eye on the formula bar, and when I click on cell B7, when I hit enter, I would have created a dynamic title. I can bold it by hitting the shortcut Control B, and now I finish creating my chart. Well, should you wish to copy this chart to another worksheet, let's say I'm going to do it, let's say, for February. So I go to February and add some values first. Let's say for the utilities, this month I paid, let's say, 270. And then for the gas, I paid a little bit up. And then for the food, we ate a lot in this month. So I type, let's say, 850 for the car expenses. And then finally, for the entertainment, I was below my budget. I would like to represent the numbers for February as well in a column chart. So instead of recreating my chart, I can simply select the January chart. I'm selecting it and copy Control C. And then I go to the destination February and I'll be pasting my chart. Of course, this chart does not represent the values for the month of February. I need to customize it for February. I'm just saving some steps. So to customize it for February, I'm going to right click on this chart and select data. 
And here, all what you need to do to change January to February is to click on the Sheet tab for February, and everything will update automatically. Then hit OK, and here is my chart. It represents the values for February, with the exception of the chart title. I want to get rid of it, so I click on the little plus sign in the upper right corner of the chart area, and then deselect the chart title, and then bring it back. Now I'll be repeating the same process with the chart title selected. I hit the F2 key type an equal sign and then click on cell B7 and then hit enter. What I did for January and February, you will be doing it for the remaining month of the year, customizing each month and customizing the chart, and you would have created a simple personal budget. In this tutorial, we used lots of nice tricks. We learned how to create sheet tabs and name them by using a simple trick in pivot tables. And then we learned how to group the sheets. We learned how to extract the sheet name by using the sheet function combined with the VLOOKUP function and the named range. We created some conditional formatting. The final thing I would like to do, I don't need this sheet one anymore. That was just a preparation sheet. So if I right click and say delete, nothing will be affected in my calculation because I copied my nested functions and then I pasted values. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumb up and don't forget to hit the big subscribe button to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.